Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We see before us five different posterior teeth from one manufacturer representing different occlusal morphologies. The two teeth here in the front represent anatomical teeth, followed by these two which represent and non-anatomic teeth, and this third, which represents the flat plane or the zero degree rational posterior tooth. This front tooth, which is an example of an anatomic tooth, has many, many sulci, cusps, spillways in its occlusal morphology, which are indicative of a natural posterior tooth. The non-anatomic tooth has a specific design to its occlusal surface also. However, its occlusal surface is based on mechanical principles and on geometrical design, with only a slight amount of attention paid to uh, anatomical form as compared to a natural tooth. The rational tooth, or the zero degree tooth, is carved based on a philosophy of occlusion with little attention given to cusp height, uh, mechanical articulation, or geometrical design. These teeth were hand carved by various people, the tooth on this side being first carved in 1909 by Dr. Giese, followed very closely by this 20 degree tooth, again by Dr. Giese, and thirdly, followed by this Pilkington-Turner tooth, or the 30-degree posterior. This other non-anatomic tooth that we see represented over here is called a functional tooth, and it is very, there's very little difference between this tooth and the original tooth designed by Dr. Giese, other than a reduction of the cusp height. This tooth, the 33-degree posterior, designed by Dr. Giese in 1909, was the first scientifically designed posterior tooth. Its occlusal morphology is based on solid geometry. It was designed on an articulator that was an inversion system with small cutters used to carve the occlusal surface. Dr. Giese utilized solid geometry in the design of this tooth using the five factors which were originally described by Dr. Hanau. And it is those five factors which we must move and, and adjust in order to arrive at balanced articulation. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.